erstellen. Moving on to 11, 11C, Agenda Item 11C. Um, and we have a bunch of folks that have signed up that want to speak, public comment. What I'd like to do is read what 11C is. Then maybe get a motion and a second on the table, because we are going to vote on it tonight. And then we'll hear public comment and the commissioner comments, and then we'll wrap up. So 11C is a review and discussion of the proposed oil and gas ordinance as brought forth by Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, it says in here, Commissioner Dan Stoddard. And we request for a motion to approve publication of title and general summary of the Planning and Zoning Oil and Gas Ordinance draft uh, September 2017 final version. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve. Uh, for the purpose of conversation, I make a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Now let's go to discussion. First, I'm going to invite the public up, uh, and then we'll uh, hear from the commissioners, and then we'll entertain an agenda item 11C. Um, first on my list uh, from the public is Chelsea Allen. Uh, my name is Chelsea Allen. Uh, I live at uh, 1216 Hancox in Santa Fe. Um, and I'm currently a third year law student at the University of Mexico. Um, <clears throat> I've been a resident in Santa Fe since 2012, and Mexico is home to me. Um, after law school, I would like to work in oil, in oil and gas in Mexico. I do not hear you, ma'am. After law school, I would like to work in oil and gas in New Mexico, ideally in northern New Mexico. Unfortunately, most of the opportunities in energy and oil and gas are in government or out of state. It's not because the resources aren't here, uh, it's because the parts of the state where I currently live and where I want to continue to make my home uh, have essentially banned oil and gas and have limited my opportunities. I'm currently faced with trying to find find energy work either in government, which is rather scarce, uh, extremely scarce actually, um, or find work in one of the very few private sector jobs, or to move out of state where jobs in energy and oil and gas are plentiful. Now, many of our brightest employers are already leaving the state um, for higher salaries, for better schools for their children, uh, and, and for more opportunity generally. The oil and gas bans in northern New Mexico uh, are only increasing this exodus. I've been uh, fortunate to have had a chance to work on this uh, oil and gas ordinance as a law clerk, and also at one time I've worked um, as an extra for the Oil Conservation Commission, which regulates oil and gas in New Mexico. Uh, the OCD is a very excellent organization. Uh, they have a very hardworking and dedicated team. Uh, I've witnessed firsthand how seriously they take their duty to regulate oil and gas production in New Mexico uh, in order to protect the public safety and environmental concerns of this state. The OCD's entire mission is to regulate New Mexico oil and gas. They're already doing that job, and they do it well. In closing, I'd like to recommend that the Commission adopt the Stoddard Ordinance as it is without further adaptation or amendments. The, the remaining concerns of our citizens are fully addressed by the OCD and the BLM. All right, thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, I'm Charles Goodmacher. Um, I'm a Rio Rancho resident. I live less than a mile from here. I uh, have two daughters in the public schools. And uh, I, I'm here tonight primarily to speak about an ordinance, ordinance that apparently you're not hearing tonight, but we'll see in the right to work ordinance. Uh, uh, I work with the National Education Association in New Mexico. Uh, yeah, here you are. I work with the National Education Association of New Mexico, and uh, we are opposing, or help you will oppose that right to work ordinance when it gets introduced for many reasons. As educators, we're on the front lines of seeing consequences for what's happening in the economy in our state. 
we all know how much our economy is hurting and the need for more jobs. I understand that's one of the, one of the thoughts behind this uh, effort. Sadly, New Mexico policymakers need to know that right to work does not create more jobs. It actually uh, hurts the working class and it would hurt the working class here in San Paul County. First of all, it strips away the rights of workers. I believe that that's really the, the impetus behind it. Because, again, the other point about it doesn't create jobs. Um, it's been shown, down, shown to drive down wages where it has been implemented. Wages actually go down, average overall wages. Um, right to work backers say it will create jobs and bring companies here. Seven out of the 10 states with the highest unemployment rates are right to work states. There's no direct uh, impact on actual employment. Hi. Thank you, sir, for your very two minutes of your time. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I'd like to submit to the board two maps. They are from the uh, Clean Air Task Force um, based on EPA analysis of cancer and respiratory health risk to residents of every county in the United States. And you, I'll leave these with you and you can pass them around, but you can see by a casual look that the northwestern and southeastern parts of the state are at risk for um, asthma, for respiratory illness, and for um, cardiovascular illness. Um, I can provide citations for this information if you like. Um, both areas, specifically Northwest San Juan County and Leah and Eddy counties in the southeast, um, are at, listed at high risk uh, above EPA levels of concern for cancer and respiratory health. Um, I know we're going to be looking at a oil and gas ordinance tonight, and I want to say that um, the ordinance, the Stoddard ordinance, does not um, uh, address some of the policies that we need to address to lower the risk for these people in the, this part of our state, these parts of our state. Um, things like setbacks, baseline testing, independent monitoring, and many proven low-cost technologies and practices available to reduce pollution from oil and gas that affect these critical parts of our state and protect the health of their uh, residents. I also want to include a study from Yale that um, shows living within a half mile, 2,640 feet, from oil and gas uh, production is correlated with health impacts. Um, including respiratory uh, illnesses. Um, I know that the Stoddard uh, Ordinance has a 750-foot setback. Uh, that's less than, than a third of, of what is needed. Hi. Thank you. Michael Sandoval. Come on up, sir. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me to uh, come before you here this evening. Uh, Michael Sandoval was here, the former governor of San Felipe from last year. But I am the current governor of San Felipe. My name is Anthony Ortiz. And so we're going to just change switch because of the capacity. But anyways, I don't have uh, anything prepared, like a statement or a testimony to share with you. But I will just, uh, because of the late notice that I received just this afternoon that you all are going to be getting here today, in regards to what's been uh, voiced here. And I have a lot of concern about fracking and drilling because of uh, a lot of numerous things. And as you can all see, as uh, people of native of uh, New Mexico, what I say about protection for our people, you know, surrounding us, 
with a lot of other communities like Texas, California, and those places, and look at all the disasters that they're facing with numerous things that they face with, you know, disastrous type of things. And fortunately, we're not going through anything like that. But if we start to drill, start to do fracking, then what are we going to initiate? I hope we don't face anything like our area to become the disasters of earthquakes or whatever. That is my concern. And with all those other things that you know that been mentioned, of what people's life are taken, having to do with cancer, and I'm one of them that had to struggle. My family, one of my tribal members that was taken by the life of a cancer just recently, a couple months ago. And with my concern of staying here, you know, I hope uh, you will be reconsidered of what's going to be coming toward us. And like I said, I didn't prepare any statement to come before you, but those are my concerns, a lot of other concerns that, and the other time when you already met, well, this was a few, few, few months, several months ago, and I was not uh, even invited, you know, as your neighboring uh, community in San Felipe, which I could have already been here, because I have a lot of concerns about drilling and fracking of uh, our Mother Earth. You know, I would hope that we should not be destroying of our Mother Earth apart. I know the concern of generating our revenues, I am aware about that. But it should not take time to pray or to be drilling or Mother Earth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Welcome anytime, Governor. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, up next then is, hey, we're on page two already. Evie Jones? Not Evie here. Jones? Yeah. Evie Jones? Did I take that right? Is it Evie? It's a little confusing. It's a little confusing. Okay, thank you. And we need your address because you didn't put it on the sheet. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I'm actually Dr. Dora Steeles and Evie Jones couldn't be here and I'm hoping that I'll be able to read. So right ahead, Nanny, you got two minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me to, to comment. What's before you tonight on the posted agenda is not what the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended. And worse, the County Commission Chairman prevented PNC from making a well thought out recommendation. Tonight, we should simply bounce agenda item 11C back to planning and zoning. We understand that the county commission chairman has been under enormous pressure from the oil and gas industry to pass their ordinance quickly. This time pressure makes no sense because applications to drill are already allowed right now, today, under the county's existing ordinances. A bit of history. In mid-August, county staff was directed to throw away a year of work and start over. A six-page industry draft called Stoddard surfaced instead. The county commission chair put the Stoddard proposal before you on August 24th agenda, skipping the required review by PNC and recommendation. You heard the complaints of poor process and voted to remand, remand the ordinance, instructing PNC to continue its work. In the meanwhile, a well-informed citizens group has been working on an ordinance draft to address many of the weaknesses of the Stoddard and prior drafts. Several planning and zoning commissioners have seen the citizens draft and requested that PNC officially review it besides the Stoddard draft before making a recommendation. The citizens group was present was to present their draft on September 5th. The five-hour 5th September 5th PNC work session made very limited changes to a staff edited Stoddard draft. Hi. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about the time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> Laura Robbins. I, I know we've heard from you before, Miss. Uh, Robbins, but I need your address for the record. 16 Joe's Hermanitas Placitas. And welcome, Commissioner Rollins. Um, Holden Rollins. And that last piece was actually written by Bob, Bob Wesley. Okay. That was not finished. My name is Laura Robbins, and as a resident of Sandoval County, I'm disturbed that this draft 
ordinance of Stoddard is being considered for publishing and posting. There's so many issues that it does not address, so I need to ask you all some questions. Why are you considering this flawed draft, which was written by and only supports the oil and gas industry? Why are you considering an ordinance that would exclude the public from knowing about and having input into an oil and gas company's request for a permit? Had permissive use applied during the Sandridge application, there would have been no public input and a bankrupt company might have been given permission to drill in Rio Rancho Estates. Why are you considering an ordinance that does not require an applicant to provide proof of its fiscal solvency and evidence that it has complied with environmental laws both in state and out of state? Why are you considering an ordinance that does not require the industry to pay for the deterioration of county roads specifically caused by oil and gas traffic, an issue of concern to residents of Cuba? Why are you considering an ordinance that does not require the industry to contribute to special training and equipment needed for emergency services? Accidents will happen. There are four to five oil spills a day in New Mexico. Why do you think that $5 million general liability insurance will cover damages that may occur? The state currently does not have the resources to pay for all the oil and gas environmental damages that occur. Eddy County and Carlsbad are fighting the state to pay for millions of dollars to repair damages created by an oil and gas injection well now. Thank you, Ms. Robbins. We wish we got answers to this. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Before you start that clock, though, uh, could we address the, the situation about there's people signed up to speak, uh, spe specifically one right after me, who's come downstairs? Uh, obviously, somebody else signed him up. No, he was in here, but then he got caught outside. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I'm Okay, I'm well, anyway, addressed. Um, my name is Mike Neese. I got you. Jennifer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Mike Neese. I live in Placitas, 86 Camino Redondo. Um, I have uh, been attending uh, this discussion since the beginning, uh, approximately 21 months ago. Uh, I want to point out that there are people downstairs that did not get reserved seats, but why is it that the industry gets reserved seats? Yeah. Yeah. The fact that um, we have a, um, an ethics ordinance going through the county right now, uh, 19 pages, 19 pages where the oil and gas ordinance is nine, plus a sig signature page. Um, but one of the things that this ethics ordinance says is public servants hold office employment or volunteer for the benefit of the public, I'll cut to the last sentence, to discharge faithfully the, the duties of their office regardless of personal considerations and to recognize that the public interest must be a prime concern. When this was discussed last week, um, it was discussed without this document even being on the agenda. The public had no uh, ability to check this document out, and um, it was very hard for me to get a copy of this document. So um, I'm, I'm a little concerned that ethics um, might be in violation even on the ethics ordinance discussion. But let's go back to the uh, ordinance. Um, the planning on tonight's agenda, we are talking about, it, it says Hi. recommendations. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. So Bill Brown is not here. He's downstairs. Uh, Barbara Snowden. <coughs> Wayne Armstrong. Okay, Mr. Armstrong, come on up, sir. Wayne Armstrong, Two Days Trail, Placidas. I've been here before. I understand you gentlemen have received a copy of the Citizens uh, Drive Ordinance, 25 pages. If you remove the strikeouts, it's like 24 pages. 
I'm not going to talk specifics. There's just too many things wrong with the STARS ordinance. I want to make some global comments. This document represents 27% of this document is the Stoddard document. Okay? The Citizens Committee, which I had nothing to do with, added less than 3%. Okay? So the question is, do the math. Where did the other 70% come from? Was it created by them? No. It was created by subject matter experts. That's the Planning and Zoning Board. They created the 70% that's in here. And somehow that 70% was dismissed, deleted, whatever, and that became the starter document. That's just wrong. There's just too many things wrong with the starter document that is corrected by this document. 70%. That 70% needs to be put back into the starter document with modifications and sent back to the Planning and Zoning Board, which are the subject matter experts. Now, how did this happen? I've been told that it was the result of paid lobbyists that somehow got involved and created the starter document, and that was sent back to the Planning and Zoning Board. That's just dead wrong. You guys have to do your job and scratch the Stoddard document, send the citizen's document back to the Planning and Zoning Board, and have it done right. Thank you very much. George Franson. Very good. I knew he was here. Thank you. Uh, George Franzen, 13 Calle Pion Citas, Vice President of ESCA. On behalf of the Eastern Sandoval Citizens Association, we would like to make the following <coughs> comments concerning the oil and gas ordinance as proposed by the Commission. First and foremost, this proposal changes the type of use of oil and gas drilling from special to permissive. This change would permit oil and gas drilling to be sited anywhere in the county without public review. Designating oil and gas drilling as a permissive use places the decision making power in the hands of appointed directors and the planning and zoning department. There is no requirement for any public hearing, no requirement for public notice, no requirement for public vote. We oppose to changing the use designation from special to per permissive. By planning to do so, the county subverts the democratic process, which I thought we talked about earlier, the importance of a democratic process. ESCA is also opposed to the requirement listed in the proposed ordinance. The requirements do not adequately address needed protection, impact to groundwater, emergency response, noise, air, road use, hazardous waste, solid waste, site uh, replication and Time. thank you thank you mr francis my uh, <laughs> listen to the citizens that you represent thank you sir Zayati, I'm from Torreon, New Mexico. Um, most the border town that serves us or that we serve is uh, Cuba, New Mexico. And I would like all of y'all to focus on what's going on over the hill in Greater Chaco, where we are being played out by BLM, the state, and counties. There are no evacuation plans. 
and we are at a high threat from fracking and no one is paying attention to it. And so before you make a decision on our behalf, please respect tribal consultations with our chapter houses because I have not heard a meeting that is directly with our tribal officials and with the Pueblo Nations as well. And please look at what's going on at Chaco, look at the methane cloud that's above us, and like we have to pay attention to those things because that is all, you know, warming up our, our earth. And we need to do something about that rather than signing leases and allowing these to happen because it does not benefit my community at all. Thank you. Okay, uh, up next is Jim McKenzie. Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, um, my name is Jim McKenzie. I'm currently residing in Albuquerque, but I resided in Sandoval County for 27 years, and it's still near and dear to my heart. I am the co-coordinator of an organization called 350 uh, New Mexico, and we have many members that are here tonight and live in Sandoval County. Um, I just wanted to ask you one favor. This is a long, contentious meeting. I see a number of you uh, have laptops. Would you do me a favor, would you Google Firestone, Colorado gas explosion? Okay? In April of this year, there was a gas explosion in Firestone, Colorado, which is north of Denver and west of Boulder. A house was destroyed, two people were killed, and two more were seriously injured. As a result of that, Governor Hickenlooper a number of statements and the industry, the same industry we're talking about tonight, the oil and gas industry, had to shut down a number of facilities. So just take a minute and look at the, uh, the news reports about gas explosion, Firestone, Colorado. Thank you very much. and I'm here to speak on behalf of Thrust Energy in support of the Stoddard version of the oil and gas ordinance. You know, this process has gone on for coming up on two years, and, you know, the charge has always been there's no regulation of oil and gas. Well, if you look right over there, you'll see the state statutes that regulate this industry. An ordinance here does not make this industry safer. It just causes more red tape and creates less jobs in the community. I have with me tonight who can't be here because they got into a car accident and are trying to get over here for New Mexico Tech students. Uh, and they want to come here to impart to you that they support the Stoddard Ordinance because they want to see, they want to have the ability to practice their professions in this state. You know, I like the saying, the signal and the noise. And the signal in this case came to the state in the Albuquerque Journal where it said that New Mexico is now five percentage points behind Mississippi in unemployment. Well, the noise that you hear behind you is overlooking that. We need jobs and we need them now. We're training people to enter this industry here today and they're gonna to go to Houston, to Denver, to North Dakota if they don't have the opportunity to practice their profession because of decisions uh, in counties such as this, counties such as where I'm from in Northern New Mexico that took an anti-industry stance and now they're hemorrhaging jobs and we're losing our kids. So this is a this is an ordinance about economic development and I hope that you vote to pat to publish the standard version of the ordinance. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Uh, you be respectful people, please. I've allowed you to applaud every one of your speakers so far. Robert Manette. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Robert Benat. I'm a senior landman for Trust Energy. Uh, I'm a native New Mexican in the, in the oil and gas business, our family. I also feel that too often that those of us from different parts of the state understand too little about the special things that each section of New Mexico holds. So I'd like to share a little about my job, a job that's commonplace and respected in southeastern New Mexico. 
In my line of work, oil and gas companies hire people like me to perform the tedious task of searching county records and federal documents to determine who owns various surface mineral interests and overriding royalties. Much like what you do to, to hire a title company to research the title insurance purposes when you buy a home. This is a demanding, time-consuming, and tedious work, but it can pay anywhere from $350 to $650 per day. I think that many people in this community, in any community, could benefit from an opportunity to obtain jobs like this. This is just one type of a common high-paying job in the oil and gas industry. Uh, skill, skills acquired as a landman are transferable, often to other oil and gas companies, and even wind and solar companies looking to establish projects. But the fact is that complying with the regulation drives up costs. Costs limit us just like costs limit all of our choices. And costs dictate where we do and do not operate, and they determine what we can and cannot do. Uh, my family and I are here to help this community provide jobs. We hope that we hope that you want to welcome these jobs. And if you do, we find the starter ordinance, while unnecessary in light of all the regulations already required, to be followed as a reasonable ordinance. I recommend its passage without amendment. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Manette. Up next, Seth Jonas. He's one of the New Mexico, New Mexico Tech students. I don't know if they're going to make it. Ah, okay. Uh, we Mr. Can Chair? Give, we can give uh, him an opportunity Mr. to Brown, see him. Mr. Brown Environmental now. Who, who, who Mr. Says? Brown has been allowed back into the room. Mr. Bill Brown? Yes. Come on up, sir. <laughs> Can we make it now? Yes. Yeah, I know some people are waiting in the outer room to get in. I see my wife made it in. That's nice. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Bill Brown. I'm a resident of Placidas. Uh, I live in the Overlook community, and I'm also the president of the Overlook Homeowners Association. And with uh, a few, basically, our community is against the current um, proposed regulations. And, and so am I. And as a practicing hydrologist, I mean, I also went to New Mexico Tech um, for a while, and I've been to UNM as well. And I do have a problem with this because I believe that the water supply for tens to hundreds of thousands of people is potentially in jeopardy due to oil and gas production. Um, this ordinance, if it passed, oversimplifies uh, the geology of Sandoval County. There are areas in the county that are very susceptible to groundwater contamination. And I don't believe at this time that the county has anything set up to look at those areas and protect those. And the rift, which is where most people live, is probably the most, um, uh, it has the greatest potential for impact. Once the water's contaminated, it's contaminated. And I would, I would come across and say that if an oil company does not have the funds to do a basic proposal, to turn stuff in, to have some public review, um, like almost every other, or many other counties in the state and across the country, then they probably don't have the funds to deal with any kind of problem that comes up during drilling, which often happens. I drilled and sat hundreds of wells. Things go wrong. That's just all there is to it. And so if, if a company doesn't have the money or wherewithal or insurance to, to provide for issues like that, when things go wrong, they'll basically just declare bankruptcy. And then it'll end up coming back to the county. And when someone has their well contaminated, Time. then I believe that leaves the county up to you know, potential legal impacts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Kaylee, do you, do you want to come up? Kaylee Warren. We are in the Okuatome of Wijawa, Eakome, Eight or Kapo Kwait or Namu. My name is Kaylee Warren. I'm an indigenous woman of this land. I'm from the pueblos of Santa Clara and Isleta. I come here in opposition of this. I want to ask and I want to bring to attention the lack of tribal consultation 
Article 32 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People details the human right of tribes to receive free, prior, and informed consultation when something like this will be happening in ancestral land within the areas of their communities. If you look at the map that's been presented, the areas where the oil and gas wells will be developed are well within the areas where tribal people currently reside, where our ancestral lands are. And I think it's important to note the pro-industry narrative that I've heard just within my first few minutes in this room, where the priority is money over life. What price can you put on a person's culture? What price can you put on the life of a person? There has to be another solution to the state's economic problems that doesn't cost either. Yeah. I urge you to consider this conflict. As indigenous people, we're often left out of this narrative, and in this situation, we absolutely have been. That's a violation of our human rights, but it also calls into question Sandoval County's dedication to its indigenous constituents. Yes. I would hope that you show us the same respect that you would to an industry. Denton Howell. My name is Benton Hall, and I live here in uh, Bernalillo Township, just down the road. Um, I would like to uh, talk about the issue of, of uh, water, particularly in how it affects this whole thing. So, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the um, Commission. <coughs> I would like to direct my comments to Article 6, Drilling Requirements in the Stoddard Ordinance. Uh, in particular, let's consider Section 6.7, Water Protection. Um, the, the operator is going to utilize best practices to ensure that the surface water and groundwater detected during operations can comply with all applicable state and federal regulations. Um, Unfortunately, in this in this paragraph, uh, we we don't see anything about the water, uh, the access uh, to water and water sources. But we know the fracking community uses from two to fourteen million gallons of water to fracture a single well. So there's a supply problem for water in New Mexico. The Department of Reclamation is now publicizing the lack of of balance of water being used versus water being supplied. And they put out a press release August 30th that concerns the shortage of water in our basin. With a water shortage, how can your ordinance propose fracking that will consume a huge amount of water? This ordinance does not explain how you are going to furnish this water that will be needed without taking away from the cities of Rio Rancho, Placidas, and Bernalillo. If this county does not have sufficient water, then this ordinance is not protecting the community from the present and future water shortage. You must delay the ordinance until the county can prove the current and future water supply. To go forward with this ordinance, a decision would have to be made to give the water to the ranchers and farmers or to use it for drilling. Mr. Howell. This information is available from the Union of Thank you. Appreciate it. Say my last name right, Teresa Cadores. No, Alan Friedman. If you can follow the bouncing ball.
uh, Chairman Chapman and Commissioners. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Alan Friedman. I live at 52 on the Sazi Trail Sloop in Placidas. Um, I'm speaking not only for myself tonight, but also as a voice for many citizens of Sandoval County. You're considering taking a serious step of publishing and posting an ordinance that has been rushed through the planning and zoning process, an ordinance with all too many deficiencies. I request that the Stoddard Oil and Gas Ordinance not be brought forward for publishing and posting tonight. Instead, I request that the Planning and Zoning Commission be given the time to review the citizens' draft of oil and gas ordinance and to come up with a more acceptable alternative than the flawed one that is before you. More than a dozen citizens of this county worked hard to draft a fair and balanced oil and gas ordinance. Elements were taken from the Stoddard draft, planning and zoning staff drafts, and reports, and from county and municipal ordinances from oil and gas producing regions of the state. We were careful not to preempt oil and gas activities in the county or to be in conflict with state and federal laws regulating oil and gas. The citizens draft balances the needs of the oil and gas industry with the very important needs and concerns of the county, our citizens, and the environment. The standard draft, on the other hand, is extremely one-sided. Although the Planning and Zoning Commission heard the citizen draft last week, due to pressure from Chairman Chapman to have the stock of ordinance on the agenda today, the citizen draft, due to time restraints, was not vetted. The ordinance, as described by Chairman Aranko in his memo to you, is thoughtful and well-drafted. In some instances, the study group's language improves the Stoddard text. The citizen draft deserves a serious hearing by Planning and Zoning, and I urge you to return this important issue to plan and zoning and let them vet the citizen draft and come with, up with an ordinance that will ensure that the county, the citizens, and the environment are protected. No, I'm not here to talk about graph. <laughs> For a change. <laughs> I'm Dick Almer uh, from Placidas, chair of the ESCA LPT, uh, president of Anasazi HOA, and a registered Republican. Uh, because I hear some in this uh, county uh, think that the only ones supporting this, uh, this uh, activity are, uh, well, let's just say liberal Democrats. And let me tell you, that's not the case. Uh, Procedus has a few of those, but we also have a substantial Republican base out there. But as Mike Meese has repeatedly told you, this is about the water. We're fully supportive of economic development in this county. We love some of what uh, you're doing right now. And we love these kids wanting to stay in this area and, and have jobs. We hope the jobs are here. But you destroy the water, and it won't be. Uh, you know, all, you have to do, all you have to do is read about the uh, wells that Sunoco poisoned over in the Pennsylvania area. That was just a few miles from where my wife and I lived in Exton, or in the elsewhere in the Appalachian uh, Basin, where my grandfather was one of the first wildcatters. Uh, back in the early 1900s. So I grew up with, with oil. Uh, Dr. Friedman, highly respected in our area because of some of the work he's done to purify our water in Placidus, uh, has provided you with a sound scientific paper showing that 6% failure rate. Well integrity, 6% rate. So I want to ask you, despite this data, are you going to bet on the assurances of the oil and gas web and say that you're willing to let them punch holes in our aquifer uh, and that those casings are not going to leak? You'd be going against the public uh, interest. Thank you. Thank you.
to try and Thank you, commissioners. Um, as you know, I'm an academic. I was an academic for many years. And can you hear me, Mary? You can't hear me? I was an academic for many years. Uh, my name is Mary Feldblum. I'm from Corrales. And, um, and I have looked at this ordinance that you're looking at with, with a perspective of, if you were my students, what grade would I give? <laughs> and it would have to be an F. Uh, there's just no question, and let me just cite a few very critical reasons that I hope you will consider uh, returning this ordinance back to the planning and zoning so that they can do the work that they're supposed to do. The first issue is that the proposed ordinance removes rights that the county and its residents should preserve, not give away. Counties, according to Judge Browning in the Moore decision, and it's not a ban, went the, uh, have the authority not only to, to have land use uh, laws, but they, the judge says similarly, the existence of the Oil Conservation Division and its ability to enact and enforce regulations does not cause the Oil and Gas Act to preempt the entire oil and gas field. In other words, the, the decision, which has not been challenged today, raises a very, very serious question that the ordinance presents. Why would a local government defer, and I'm quoting from the ordinance, its powers and authority to that of state and federal agencies if any conflict occurs regarding this ordinance and state and federal laws? The Stoddard proposal makes the presumption in section 1.3 that state and federal regulations are always right, that the county is presumed to be always wrong. That is an enormous assumption. Hi. And if I may go um, a little bit longer. The other issue is transparency and public accountability. And these are important words that I've heard before this commission. The director of planning and zoning is authorized to automatically grant a permit after a simple checklist is deemed complete. There's no public notice and no public hearing. Once that is complete, then the company can drill. And then, since there are no requirements for hours of operations, they can drill at any time of day or night. And then, once the county permit is given, it can be get, taken away unless OCD does. Why would you even consider an ordinance that removes the right of the public to be informed about such a major undertaking and to have their concerns heard and hopefully addressed? Thank you. Pat Parkman, no. Um, Mario, I'm sorry, I'm, come on up, sir. I, I can't pronounce it. Good evening. It's Atencio, A-T-E-N-C-I-O. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Mario Atencio, Mud Clan, born for Bitter Water Clan. I'm from Nutnezin. In Spanish, it's called Torreon. And so I come to you uh, as a relative of all my people, and we're saying that, uh, I come here to say that this planning is only ordinance. Uh, I don't know if any of those, the, 20, the 12 nations of people, indigenous peoples, were even consulted with. Uh, there, there is a state tribal collaboration act on the books. Um, I work closely with the Torian chapter house and the Owen Sino chapter house and the Counselor chapter house. They're, they form together as a group. Um, their constituents are largely San Juan County residents. Um, what we're what we're very what I'm very scared of is the lack of parity in any of these uh, uh, planning planning issues and processes because we are hardcore voting members of San Juan County and none of this has even been brought to our attention. Some of this the proposed welling the proposed drilling is really adjacent to tribal lands 
And what is what is one thing that's probably out of order in that ordinance, just reading through, is that according to the 2005 Energy Policy Act, where the federal government preempts any of all of this stuff, high, horizontal drilling or hydraulic fracturing is exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act, Clean Air Act, CERCLA, the Superfund side, the Superfund monies. So you're going to be approving an unregulated oil issue, even though this guy comes up with political uh, whatever, political drama. That stuff is Hi. not regulated. So this is a thing you're the lives of the people of the county are at stake. I drive 550 and all the way through San Luis, San Luis, all the way down to Torreon. And I'm saying there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to happen out there, head-on collisions. You already see it. One thing, in case of point, last thing, but I'm going to finish, and not easy. A family of four was wiped out on 550. Yes. Because of oil, and gas. guess. Very dangerous things are coming, and you want to do this, you're branding. It's really hard to have something beautiful when there's oil jacks. Right here. Thank you. I live downstream in Bernalillo County, and as far as I know, fracking makes bad neighbors. As a Bernalillo County dweller, I am very aware that uh, you are here and that I have watched this process closely. I wonder how oil and gas is a, is a bridge to the future. I see Rio Rancho has a city motto, Rio Rancho City of Vision. A city of vision, speaking to the young people who want jobs, would be to renewable, clean yeah, yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're not in this current political climate. That is where we're going. And this fossil fuel death train is going down. In New Mexico, I don't need to speak about the water that is fragile on a high desert um, plain. You all have heard that. How we use millions of gallons of that precious water to purify the deadly cocktail of chemicals used for fracking. Recently, I came to your county courthouse and I sat here, and I want to draw your attention to the mural in the back of this room, as well as all the emblems on the, the, along the top. This, when you talk about Pete Domenici, this is your commonwealth. These are what you serve. They all represent the values of an intact and healthy land and water base in the communities they have served for a millennia. Many who have come before us, the nine pueblos we see, the seal, seals of the nine pueblos we see, the San Juan County villages, they have kept this land in sacred trust. Are we willing to squander and fritter it for a few seasons of fracking instead of building a future of solar energy now? To our great stupidity, short-sighted denial of drought and the preciousness of water, we live with the lack of political will of our leaders. And I see county and city officials turn a blind eye to diversifying our energy economy and continuing to look back at oil and gas development. Corrupt commissioners follow the money. Commissioners with integrity. Uh, regarding uh, the fracking industry and its impacts. 
Uh, I am doing this on behalf of the citizens of Sanibel County and the Common Ground Community Trust. Um, I hope that this, uh, we've had problems with uh, submitting records and I hope that this record goes in and is uh, there for any type of appeal in the future when these impacts are going to affect the health and safety, water and air of the, of the county citizens. Because this ordinance does not protect them. And um, I was supposed to ask if you are going to give permission for this, these documents to be entered into the record. Um, I also have a list of uh, information here that um, I need to submit for the record. And it is, has all of our safety concerns in there because you have never given us a safety emergency response plan. We have an outstanding IMPRA request and it's been outstanding since September 5th, 19, uh, 2016. Um, the, now we have water safety issues, emission safety issues. I don't have time to read all of these, but I hope that you do. If somebody could take these and bring them to the commissioners. Hi. And um, we hope that um, you do the risk assessments that are, are necessary and cost-benefit analysis, especially on our tax valuations, on our property taxes down the line. This is going to affect the value of our properties and it's going to impact our health. And I want to make sure that these things are in the record so that uh, the county um, understands the, um, the magnitude of the issues that um, we are presenting. Thank you, Mr. Mingo. Next up is uh, New Mexico Representative Garrett Blint. Commissioners, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of my constituents this evening. I'm the representative for, for uh, House District 65, which includes a large portion of Sandoval County. That large portion of Sandoval County includes seven pueblos, three Navajo Nation chapters, and the town of Bernalillo. And I'm here tonight to articulate to all of you positions from my constituencies in my district, and even those outside of my district. Those inside of my district include those sovereign nations that I mentioned before, the town of Bernalillo, a lot of which some are this state's oldest communities, if not this nation's oldest communities. We're built on a history of partnership, of friendship, a resilient community that's based on just that. We take care of each other. Resilient because we have respect for one another. At our core roots, where we come from, the Pueblos, the town of Bernalillo, respect each other and the decisions that are made are well vetted amongst each other. We respect one another and, we, and most of all we respect the landscape which has taken care of us since time immemorial. What has transpired over the past several months at this point flies extremely in the face of everything that those communities, those plaques in the back of me on that wall stand for, which is community. As an elected official, as elected officials, for all of us, we must stand for transparency, we must stand for inclusion in any governmental decision that we are considering or that we will eventually make. To my knowledge, that has not happened. And I'm looking at every single one of you. That has not happened by your planning and zoning commissioners or even the proposed decision that you were creating tonight. It's not happened. The plaques on the walls, the places that I represent, deserve that type of consideration. They deserve, they deserve that type of consideration, and they deserve that type of collaboration so that they understand what types of handcuffs you are putting them in. Because that's what it is. 
you are putting them in handcuffs. And as a state representative for many of these communities, we deserve the consultation. That planning and zoning commission that you created, you as commissioners, deserve to provide those sovereign nations, the municipalities, that consultation. Because right now, none of the seven sovereign nations that I, that I mentioned earlier, nor the town of Bernalillo, have been consulted on what the potential impacts. When I'm saying consultation, I mean unbiased, objective consultation. Ones that, that you're not telling them what you're going to do, ones that provide them an opportunity to interact with you so that they can create with you a future for this area that we call home. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, those people that I talked about earlier, the historical people that have lived in this area since time immemorial, the roots are deep. Oil and gas companies go and they come with the money. Yes. We have to live here. My daughter has to live here. Her kids have to live here. Our people have to live here forever. We were here first. We'll be here last. And as I said before, in the legislature, on the House floor, that when the people leave, the leaders will follow. And I'm asking all of you to consider what your people are saying. Stop following the money. Follow what your people are saying. And I appreciate the opportunity to address all of you this evening. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mr. Chairman. show goodwill and follow federal policy and Hi. historic preservation. Counties are refi required to follow the act when cultural landscape includes public lands. There is a statement in the standard 
operating procedures for tribal notification to drill within three miles of reservation borders only. Note, county commissioners stated that they would have a public hearing at Santa Domingo. Then they preempted the National Historic Preservation Act. I will not, I will not, give me just a little bit more time, please. Thank you. Give me another minute, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let us not quibble about the law. Let us be good neighbors. This affects us all. We are here before you to request that you listen to us. I can't say anything more than that. Please hear us. Please engage with us in meaningful consultation without all this legal hassle. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Henderson. He is from Corrales, New Mexico, Sandoval County. I am 100% opposed to the very weak Stoddard Ordinance. I am 100% in favor of the Citizens Ordinance. Please take the necessary steps to adopt this ordinance. In a phone conversation with one county commissioner, I was assured that the Citizens Ordinance is unnecessary because there are state and federal regulations that cover everything. If this is in fact true, then I ask, why would you even think of opposing the citizen ordinance? Is the pressure from the oil companies really that heavy? Protect the citizens that elected you. Represent your constituents. Do the right thing for the people of Sandoval County. We do not want unregulated drilling in the face of all the citizens of Sandoval County that have demonstrated their opposition to the Stoddard Ordinance. How could you possibly think about passing it? I enjoyed the branding conversation and about this for the Sandoval County brand, quote, where you can drill wherever you want. <laughs> Is this the branding that you want? The choice is yours. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Joanne Young. Good evening, Commissioners, Mr. Chairman. My name is Joanna Young, and I'm of uh, 14 Sunset Boulevard in Placitas. I'm here, ma'am. Thank you. I'm here tonight to make three points if I have time. The first is the thousands of pages that industry points to over there uh, as adequate protection for our water systems does not actually, in fact, protect our water systems. And I have some proof to show you from OCD themselves. This is a generalized record of groundwater impact sites that OCD generated back in 2005, and it's from the 90s, the mid-90s to 2005. Um, it has no fewer than 700 instances of groundwater impact sites here in New Mexico. So the claim that's been made here that there has never been one instance of groundwater contamination from drilling operations here in New Mexico is completely false, and I'm stating that based on OCD's own report. So I'd like to admit this uh, report as evidence at the end of my comment, please. The second point is to please wait for the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources study that's currently underway by Mr. Ron Broadhead, which Sandoval County commissioned, as it will inform the public and the planning and zoning staff 
regarding potentially oil producing strata in relation to aquifer bearing strata, which is mainly the concern by most people here today. <coughs> My third point is to say that the Stoddard Ordinance is not nearly sufficient to protect our county, its resources, and its people. Please look to the Citizens Ordinance that springs from dozens of hours of research for strong oil and gas ordinances already in place in New Mexico to inform a strong oil and gas ordinance here for Senegal County. Thank you. States is great. One of the reasons it's great is yeah, one of the reasons the United States is great is because we have the ability to speak locally and to determine ourselves locally. Locally to the city level, locally to the county level. I think most of us want jobs, want wealth, want great value brought to our our homes. Part of that value is in the land. Part of that value is in resources. But each local community should have the right to say what type of jobs they want at what particular point. The citizen's proposal will allow and will give back to the people the opportunity for them to speak locally. And that is what we are asking for. Do not take away one of the greatest powers that the United States has given to its people. Thank you. certified economic developer and have been so for 42 years. Local economic development is like a patchwork quilt. It's all intertwined, interrelated, and connected. As an economic developer, I'm concerned every day about every working person in our community having the opportunity to take a quality paycheck home. That is a guiding principle I've always had in my career. I'm not concerned about certain segments, I'm concerned about everyone. But I'm concerned that families and individuals have an opportunity for a quality job. We have over 6% of our population, our working population, that right now does not have that opportunity. In my career, whenever communities impose unreasonable, onerous, and costly regulations on one sector, it has a cascading impact that affects the whole economy. The oil and gas industry represents 14% of the economy in the state. 14% of its gross state product is oil and gas. The average wage of oil and gas in this community is $6,000 a year higher than the average for the entire county. For those reasons, and based on my experience, based on the fact that I have read the Stoddard Ordinance, have done my research, I believe it is reasonable and should be passed, and I encourage you to do so. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Up next is uh, Lou Fisher. I think my leg went to sleep. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioners, uh, I have uh, a great respect for all of you. I've uh, interacted with uh, all of you except our newest Commissioner uh, interpersonally. I just uh, would appreciate if you uh, kindly give me my two minutes and listen to what I have to say. I am. Uh, I'm about as pro-oil and gas as anybody you'll ever come across. 
Uh, I'm in the industry. I love the industry. I What I do is I negotiate and close merger and acquisition transactions throughout the entire country and Canada. So uh, I, I know our industry and I know it uh, very well. And by the way, you don't have to give me a, a reserved seat. I'm happy to sit with my uh, my neighbors. And uh, but uh, what I what I want to share with you is 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 something you're not going to get uh, from anybody else. I don't think I'm in a unique position, and I'll, I'll have some repercussions. But I can I can talk openly as an insider. And uh, what I want to do is help you to understand uh, the an insider perspective of our industry. I have my clients are owners of drilling companies. I've helped them find financing, get merged with bigger companies, bring in investors. And and uh, what, what I what I really want to share with you is that uh, uh, we we are entrepreneurs and we we need to be regulated. Uh, we need to be regulated and uh, we need to be fairly and firmly regulated uh, because we're entrepreneurs if we have free easy regulations uh, we tend to we, we have a potential to become our own worst enemy and uh, I, I've seen it uh, throughout the years and throughout the country so I, I want to I just want to uh, point that out and I have a packet that I, I you have to guide me as to how to get this into the record uh, but I, I want this, I don't know if this has to go to your attorney, but it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's letters from the, from the, from the mayor of Bernalillo expressing his outrage about this entire process. And, uh, he's been ignored, uh, the Pueblos, there's a lot of, uh, of your constituents who are, uh, are just, uh, being ignored in this process and it's just, it's just fundamentally not correct. And also, these books over here, I'll tell you something else about it, about the, about the industry. Those books uh, are, 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 as, are, are as worthwhile and as good as the degree to which they are enforced. And I can tell you, in many instances, they're not enforced at all because a lot of stuff doesn't even get reported. So and I, want, I just uh, want you to know that. I also know Chair, Chairman Arango. I've known him for 15 years. Uh, he is, he's bedrock. Uh, I've seen commissioners come and go on both commissions. He's been there the whole time. He's a selfless servant of the public. He gets no money for what he does. Give him another chance. I know you guys are all primed up to, for, to, for your vote here. Uh, I, what I'm going to ask you to do, I, I just, I'm going to ask at least three of you to, to, uh, to please stand up to this, uh, this bulldozed process uh, that has superseded everything else. Uh, Chairman, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. you. You've gone over here a lot of times, sir. We've heard from you many, many, many times at every meeting. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Appreciate your passion. Um, Try it again, Burton Cox. Hope I got that right, sir. Yes, you did. Thank you. Well, this is kind of interesting because uh, I'm, I'm probably the only other oil insider here to uh, speak on on uh, behalf of the citizens. Louder, please. Okay. okay. Uh, my name is Burton Cox. I live down the hill in Corrales. Uh, that's my credentials. I spent 26 years as a geologist and a uh, um, upstream oil and gas project manager for Shell Oil Company. And so I have some experience with oil and gas developments. Uh, obviously, I'm not an anti-development person. I believe that done right, oil and gas development can be a net positive. But it's, it's clear to me that you know, fossil fuel development is usually good for some segments of, of a, po a local population, job seekers, mineral rights owners, some businesses. But it can be negative, is strongly negative to others, you know, which include renters, landowners without mineral rights, businesses in competing industries, the general public from increased air, water, and noise pollution, increased use of scarce resources, for example, water, increased road traffic, and road deterioration to increased traffic. In my career, I've worked on oil and gas developments from southeast New Mexico to Alaska to North Dakota to 
in Nigeria, and I've seen good developments, and I've seen communities that have been harmed from poorly planned and poorly executed developments. Unfortunately, oil and gas companies have made a lot of messes throughout the world. Left unregulated, many oil and gas companies will cut corners and choose the cheapest route uh, from their standpoint. Don't accept what they say on face value. Look what they have done when they are unregulated and when the, or when the regulators have been co-opted by the industry. Whether Sandoval County becomes the next, uh, a nexus of a new oil and gas development boom is not known. If that happens, you want to have regulations in place to be able to control those developments. This is a genie that cannot be put back in the bottle. Don't assume the state regulators care as much about your local community as you do. Don't automatically defer to them. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Thank you for your time. Thank you. to see my time with Mr. Flynn, so he'll be covering most of the same topics I will. I only need two minutes. I can follow directions. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. I, I just wanted to, my name is Ryan Flynn. I represent the New Mexico Oil and Gas Association, and I represent over 100,000 men and women who work in the oil and gas industry in New Mexico. Louder, please. Okay, let me start again then. My two minutes start again. Um, my name is Ryan Flynn. And I'm here on behalf of the over 100,000 men and women of the oil and gas industry who work in New Mexico, including the thousands of men and women in Sandoval County who have been working in the oil and gas industry for over 50 years. For over 50 years, our industry has been operating in Sandoval County. You've been insulted, you've been called corrupt tonight. Uh, you've been repeatedly presented with information that has simply no basis in fact. I want to. True fact. True fact. I want to. I, I would just request that I be given the opportunity to, yes, to respect the body. Please don't we, we listen to the comments of our opposition. That's and right. This is my opportunity to come here. I'm not wagging my finger. I'm not mugging for the cameras. Go ahead, Mr. Flynn. Thank you. We've been we've been participating in this process for over a year. I want to thank the Planning and Zoning Commission for their thoughtful efforts. Make no mistake, the New Mexico Oil and Gas Association does not support local regulation of industry. We believe there are significant and stringent regulations currently in place at both the federal and state level. However, we have attempted to collaborate and compromise each and every time. Every time the Planning and Zoning Commission and this commission has asked questions we have provided answers in the form of factual information. You've been presented with a false choice repeatedly, and that is oil and gas, you have to choose between oil and gas activity, indeed between the benefits of our modern society and environmental and public safety. And that is simply not a choice you need to make. We have drilled over 50,000 wells in the state of New Mexico without one single instance of groundwater contamination as a result of the oil and gas drilling process. Our air, people, please. Our air quality today is at a dramatic improvement since 2005 levels as a direct result of the oil and gas industry. We've seen greenhouse gases, including methane emissions, decrease dramatically by almost 20% in the last 12 years. Have some courtesy people, please. You're repeatedly. Please, please. None of y'all were interrupted, and there was no cat calling from the room when your speakers were up here. So have a little courtesy, please. Thank you. You know, I, again, I, I listen here. I've, I've been in your position many times before, and I listen as we're insulted over and over again. I don't envy your position, but I just ask you tonight to do what's right, to base your decision on facts, on evidence, on science. Don't be bullied. Don't believe that you have to make a choice between environmental protection and protecting your local communities. You don't. 
the, the, the idea that you can have renewable energy development without <coughs> oil and gas, again, is simply false. Each and every renewable installation that's put in is backed up and coupled with oil and gas production. You've been presented repeatedly with factual information about the processes that we utilize, about our industry. We are the men and women who work alongside you. We are your friends, we are your neighbors. We care about your community. We care about your water quality. And we ask you just to make a decision that's grounded in science and in respect. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Jason Espinosa. Uh, Chairman, uh, members of the Commission, I'm Jason Espinoza. I'm the President and CEO of the New Mexico Association of Commerce and Industry. And we represent businesses, both big and small, across every industry sector in every corner of the state. And we do urge you tonight, on behalf of our membership, our statewide membership, to adopt the Stoddard Ordinance without any changes. When we talk with the statewide, our membership, one of the biggest things that any business needs is certainty and predictability. We certainly believe that this balanced ordinance that has been carefully crafted over a year brings that into place. It balances existing state and federal law with issues in the county that where the county truly has jurisdiction. The statewide business community also understands the importance of the oil and gas industry to the state economy, to our statewide education system, in terms of workforce development and creating the jobs that we need not only today but for tomorrow. So we urge you to support the Stoddard Ordinance without any changes and thank you for your time. All right, thank you Mr. Espinosa. Up next is Diane Polecchio. Polecchio. Next, but not Mike. We've already heard from Mike. No, he's Mike. He has some you. things I would like him to mention. Oh, we okay. okay. All right. Um, my name is Diane Blackie. I live in Placidas, as you know. And I'd just like to address the air quality. Uh, the gentleman just said our air quality has improved. We have a monitor, the Mexico Environmental Department up in Placidas. And we have two times a day where our air quality spikes into the danger zone. And even though um, they take an average, it's in the acceptable range. We still have in Placidas the worst air quality in New Mexico. So I just like to say I don't think that's true for Placidas. And um, Mike, if you would uh, A couple things that need to be brought out. Um, the, on the agenda for tonight, um, on the 11th C, there's agenda item summary with recommendations. It says the Planning and Zoning Commission at their September 12, 2017 public hearing viewed, reviewed the proposed oil and gas ordinance and by a vote of three to two um, recommended forwarding the proposed ordinance to the Board of County Commissions. That's true. With a re recommendation to approve publication of the ordinance for the purpose of fulfillment of New Mexico State Statute, um, that is false. I don't know why we are printing stuff like that, but I hope you all have the memo from the um, Planning and Zoning Commission. The memo is supposed to be attached to this Stoddard Ordinance. That's what they voted on, and it's not on the agenda again tonight. We are missing, many times we are missing things on our agenda that need to be there. Mr. Arango says because there was no time to consider such extensive changes coming from the citizens group, the commission agreed to send the county board this memo highlighting. So I hope you have it. Do you have it? Because if you don't, I've got several copies. Every, every commissioner has had it. Good. For better than Make we. sure that it gets discussed. Thank it's you very much. Agenda. Yes, sir. Sound like? My leg went to sleep, too. Okay. 
Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Can you speak into the mic, sir? Can I hear you, sir? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commission. My name is John Black, 3613 Mexico 528-87114. I am a uh, third generation New Mexican. I'm not a newcomer, and I'm not a teenager anymore either. My mother was a native of Pope, New Mexico, before it was a state that's a suburb of Artesia for a geography lesson for some people. Hope it is a little oil spot in the road on the way from Artesia to Maine. Anyway, I uh, wholly support the Stoddard Ordinance without the amendments. I felt like our properties, I have 19 properties in San Juan County that I pay tax on. I felt like our properties were sufficiently protected by the New Mexico laws and the federal laws. I have not seen any instances in my lifetime in living uh, in southern New Mexico and northern New Mexico. I have not seen a case where there was an incident with an oil and gas drilling project that, that was any huge detrimental event to our environment. But I've seen thousands of jobs generated. Everyone who came to this meeting tonight has the benefit of oil and gas to get here to this meeting. And oil and gas, by the way, generates electricity. PNM uses a lot of gas to generate electricity. There's a reef power station on the Sao del Norte to show you what you can do with gas to generate clean power. I think it's a well-managed industry in New Mexico. I don't think it's out of control whatsoever. I just drove to Chama the other day. I go there frequently to go to the Chama Land and Cattle Company that the Hickorya Tribe owns, and I drove through 550 to Dulce, and I, I saw numerous oil and gas operations going on on the Hickory Apache Reservation that were very well managed. They paint the tanks the color of the landscape to blend into the landscape. They're actually less onerous than uh, the, some of the wind towers of, that I see on top of the uh, Mount Taylor and some of the uh, solar panels that, you, that cover an immense amount of ground and destroy any use other than solar panels. You can't even run cattle underneath them. So anyway, I, I appreciate all the work you've done on this. I hope it comes to a successful <coughs> conclusion soon. I, I do respect everybody's right to speak. So I hope the right decision gets made tonight. Thank all you. right, thank you, Mr. Black. So, I, and your name, ma'am? Pam Neese. Pam Neese, I had Mike up here twice. You guys are tag teaming me, come on up. And when this niece is done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a five minute break. Um, and then we'll come back in and do the business. Ms. Meese? Uh, yeah, Commissioner uh, Chapman, Commissioner of Things. Um, I'm Pam Meese. I'm from Placidas, New Mexico. I recently wrote you guys a letter, and I'd like to read from some of it. Recently, in Maricopa County, Arizona, an elected official acted beyond his job description and with a warped and disturbed sense of purpose. Before the citizens of Maricopa County could vote him out and criminal charges brought, he had cost the county taxpayers $44 million. An oil and gas ordinance written by the industry does not protect Sandhill County taxpayers from extreme liability exposure. It does not protect Sandhill County elected and appointed officials from extreme liability and or criminal exposure. The oil and gas industry is not known for policing itself. The Stoddard Ordinance assumes that all oil and gas operations in Sandoval County would and does follow API best practices. The Stoddard Ordinance assumes that there would never be catastrophic well failure, although we know 5% of wells do fail. The Stoddard Ordinance assumes that the oil and gas industry will bring high paying jobs and revenue to Sandoval County, but does not question the cost benefit ratio. A bad ordinance is worse than no ordinance at all. 
Currently, Sandoval County does not have millions of dollars in surplus funds to sustain catastrophic liability exposure. Do your job. Passing slaughter and industry-written ordinance is beyond your job, job description. You do not work for the oil and gas industry. You work for us. Yeah. You work for me. Voting for Stoddard is acting with a warped and disturbed sense of purpose that is clear and it is on the record. Foundational on county staff, writer, staff writing, Stoddard and ABI best practices, the Citizens Oil and Gas Ordinance protects both the county from liability and exposure and upholds intent to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the Sandoval County citizens. Pass the Citizens Oil and Gas Ordinance. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we're going to take at 8.52 p.m., two minutes Mr. after. Mr. Chairman, if we leave the room, we will we'll be, we'll, we'll be allowed back in. You'll have to ask the man at the door. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're going to come back into our meeting. Um, point we have heard all the public comment um, and I would like to open for the commissioners and my reasoning in opening tonight as far as commissioner comments are concerned with agenda item 11c is because I want to make it clear what it is the commission is considering tonight and then of course I've got my own uh, comments that I want to make about the ordinance and, and so on and so forth. So tonight, my fellow commissioners, we have the opportunity to move Sandoval County forward. I'd like to clearly explain to you the agenda item that is before you. We are to discuss, review, and then vote on moving the oil and gas ordinance, which has been dutifully put forth for our consideration by the Sandoval County Planning and Zoning Commission. Our vote tonight is to only publish the ordinance thereby formally making it available for the public to review. I also need to note that the memo which the Chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission put forth following the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission on September the 12th, whereas the oil and gas ordinance was voted forth, was reviewed and com commented on by the Director of Planning and Zoning, Mike Springfield. I would like to summarize those comments for you here again, as I know you received this summary in an email, but the public has yet to hear what those summary comments were. And I'd go ahead and invite Director Springfield and Mr. Hill to come on up, uh, just in case there's going to be some questions from the commission uh, in regards to this. Uh, but I do want to get on the public record um, Director Springfield's summary statement that he sent to the commissioners on September the 15th. I know the PNZ meeting was on the 12th. We didn't actually receive uh, Chairman Arango's memo until, as I recall, the afternoon of the 14th. Correct. Thank you, Director Springfield. Um, please pay particular attention to this part of my comments tonight because of the importance regarding the fact that these concerns about the ordinance we are considering raised by the public but yet not important enough that the PNZ Commission thought that we'd be, they'd be appropriate to be put in the ordinance that was voted forward. Also, because Director Springfield points out why these concerns are not uh, included in the ordinance tonight that you're considering. Here is verbatim Dr. Uh, Director Springfield's email memo that he sent to you that I want to put into the public record tonight. Commissioners. At their meeting of September the 12th, Chairman Arango was also authorized to submit a memo on behalf of the PNZ Commission outlining issues raised by the public for your consideration. Staff has reviewed that memo and offered the following comments. Overall, staff believes the Chairman's memo is true and correct summary of the information presented to the PNZ Commission by the Citizens Group. On page two, four major issues are listed that the PNZ Commission agreed should be brought forward to the Board of County Commissioners for consideration. They are, number one, lack of public notice and opportunity to comment. Staff agreed with this comment and proposed requiring staff to post application notice on the county's website. 
Number two, inadequate OCD staffing, funding, and authority. Staff has repeatedly stated that this is not a county issue, but rather an issue that needs to be brought to the attention of OCD or the New Mexico legislature. Number three, insufficient provision for protection and maintenance of roads. This issue was discussed at length by the PNZ Commission. Alternative language was agreed to by the PNZ Commission that requires Public Works Department to review an applicant's road plan to determine if county roads will need to be brought up to county standards prior to use by the oil and gas industry. This is consistent with the current practices of Sandoval County. Road bonding and maintenance funding were removed by the PNZ Commission as the county does not currently require this of any other type of land use within the county. Inadequate insurance coverage. Insurance requirements were raised by the PNZ Commission from 1 million to 5 million, and that's, when, that's what's in the ordinance tonight. Other issues raised by the public were not addressed by the PNZ Commission in their approval of the draft ordinance recommended by county commission, for county commission consideration. Uh, number one, section one deals with issues related to the scope, purpose, and findings of the citizen's ordinance. These sections have little substantive bearing on the validity of the draft recommended by the PNZ Commission. Just remember, these are not my comments. These are not the commission's comments. These are the comments from the director of planning and zoning for Sandoval County. Section four requires a special use rezoning for oil and gas activities. This issue was considered and rejected when proposed uh, SOP drafts by the staff were rejected. Section five and six have several preemptive issues that are not consistent with instructions given to the PNZ Commission and staff by the County Commission regarding avoidance of preempted issues. So the ordinance that's been put forth by the PNZ Commission represents over a year and a half of effort with input from the public industry, the experts, regulatory agencies, as well as the planning and zoning staff. I would like to personally acknowledge everyone's contribution to this process. The public's passion has come through, and this board acknowledges that passion and your input. Unfortunately for me, and I cannot ex speak for the entire board, uh, but I personally have experienced some negative uh, in, uh, input and uh, feedback, which I realize kind of comes with the job, but nevertheless, it's not really needed. I also want to summarize and provide some clarity regarding public input and how we got to where we are today. So early on in the process, the public as well as this commission recognized that we did not have an ordinance re regarding oil and gas in San Diego County. The process started with a lot of public hearings, workshops, testimony, <laughs> input, Bottom line, everyone would agree, I would think, that the process of law has allowed for everyone to participate. What needs to be pointed out is how the process evolved from one of a conditional use ordinance to one of a special use ordinance to finally one of a permissive use ordinance. Interestingly along the way, and please don't interrupt me, interesting along the way is that this board and the public have agreed on each instance. Then finally, when the public participation yielded a draft ordinance, what was brought forth was previously rejected special use format, which the public itself rejected. In fact, the document was basically one which the PNC Commission had abandoned when it was argued by the public that they wanted an ordinance, not an administrative procedure. I have done so, I, I, I have done so previously and will acknowledge again now the hard work put in with this endeavor by our board of planning and zoning commissioners slash volunteers. I mean, these folks don't get paid to do what they do. Uh, the fact that they would come here and meet for hours on end to satisfy uh, their public service to you, the citizens of Sandoval County, I think should be commended. I've heard very little, though, if any positive comments or appreciation from the public regarding these folks' efforts. With the current ordinance that the PNZ Board has put forth, I want to commend them for taking the time and in fact, in excess of 10 hours, just refining the language, which I want to note that they unanimously agreed to. Given the challenge of putting forth an ordinance pertaining to oil and gas operations in Sandoval County has required that a balance be struck. Between those multiple regulatory layers, the ability of the county to administer the ordinance that passes and apply countywide requirements of the industry that protect the citizens and resources of Sandoval County. This overarching concept 
was aptly described by our newest commissioner, Dr. James Holden Rhodes, when he issued a letter to Director Springfield stating that, and I quote, the Sandoval County Oil and Gas Ordinance should, not, should only address those items that are not presently covered by federal and state regulations. I also need to share with you the vision of this board. There has been a change here at Sandoval County that reflects the current makeup of the board and the top executives here. We are pro-business, we are pro-economic development, and we support in our purposeful and our intent when it comes to job creation. While we are focused on expanding the business and in turn the tax base in Sandoval County, we are also respectful of our duty in answering the citizens' call for an oil and gas ordinance, especially when you consider that the county currently has and has had for decades oil and gas producing wells without any county ordinance. It is very well documented and has been discussed many times, New Mexico's economic dependence on the oil and gas industry. So rolling out those statistics for you one more time, I, don't just, I just don't think it's necessary. But it is worth noting how this essential industry touches every facet of yours and my life. I am proud to share with you that your own county government is taking steps to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. You may not know about this. I don't think it's ever been discussed. But we are, via our own energy efficiency initiative, once completed, all the county's facilities, offices, will be more energy efficient as we modernize all our equipment and add a significant dose of solar energy component to our operations, allowing us to effectively lock in our energy costs for a period of approximately the next 15 to 20 years. This accomplishes two things that we practically eliminate the rising rates of electrical power and we reduce our operational costs, saving you, the San Juan County taxpayers, money in the process. Again, after nearly two years of public testimony, work sessions, expert advice, we have before us an oil and gas ordinance that's the culmination of these efforts to consider this evening. As is indicated in its title on our website, the Planning and Zoning Oil and Gas Draft of September 2017 was thoughtfully crafted over the course of two months and then passed by the PNC Commission for your consideration. Our direction was for the Planning and Zoning and Department and Commission to take a balanced approach, <coughs> consider public input as well as sought input from industry experts to deliver an ordinance that addresses these limited areas. One, setback requirements to protect homeowners, our children's schools and playgrounds, and interaction with existing businesses. Two, noise. Three, emergency response. Four, road plans, both planned use and how to mitigate future impacts. Lighting and visual concerns as well. You see in front of you this evening the statutes outlined uh, in the ordinance passed uh, by PNC. These are just a sampling of the statutes that um, regulates the oil and gas industry. And to comply with those regulations would involve another volumes, at least four or five, the same size as those. These are only the state statutes, mind you that the state of New Mexico imposes on the oil and gas industry. They're represented by these volumes here. Um, they do not include the federal statutes that uh, we couldn't get here in time for this meeting tonight. Some of you may also recall the four-page document provided to us at the May work session, which outlined every concern expressed by citizens and the agency responsible for regulation. The ordinance before you effectively addresses all the issues, the county concerns, and provides regulatory certainty for both industry and our community members, both of whom have waited long enough for the county to take action. And that's my statement. And um, now uh, I will yield to my fellow commissioners to hear their discussion in regards to the ordinance. Who would like to go first? Commissioner Block. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for those words. Uh, I need just a, a few seconds to get these mic and these books real quick. We can't hear you. These here. Mr. 
chairman said, these are just a few of a larger group of regulations and rules the industry has to go through. Can you hear me now, Lou? <coughs> these are just a few of the regulations and rules that the industry has to go through. And this does not include, like the chairman said, the entire Mexico code for the industry. Many of you know my background is nuclear weapons. That's what I did for over 20 years in the Air Force as a nuclear officer. And I can tell you what I see in front of me is a hell of a lot more than what we had in the Air Force when it came to weapons system safety rules and other guidance and regulations, which is very, very well regulated and safe in the Department of Defense and the United States Air Force. With that, I want to thank all those in attendance tonight for being here and those that are watching on video. I also want to thank the P&Z Commission for all their hard work. These are public servants who volunteer their time at no cost to the taxpayer because they believe in serving and they have a tough job and I firmly believe they did their due diligence during this process. I know this has been a contentious, emotional, and passionate issue for most of us in the room. I have tried to look at this issue with empirical data and to the best of my ability to look at the data and facts without prejudice or passion. This is a tough decision we are making tonight with this first step. I am sad and disappointed that some groups have reverted to tactics of threats, lies, bullying, and personal smears toward elected and public officials. I and my family, my family, have certainly been a target by the anti-ordinance people, as many of you are already aware. I was elected last November and took my seat on this commission in January. Since my first meeting, and I've come to understand for almost a year prior to then, Sandoval County's need to address oil and gas operations has been belabored by our constituents, environmental groups, the oil and gas industry, and all sorts of experts from higher education to state agencies to scientists recommended by environmental action groups to lawyers and many more. I campaigned last year and reaching across to others who may have a different point of view than me. I have enjoyed meeting with many of the anti-ordinance folks and some of them I call friends, like Dr. Alan Friedman who is here tonight, who does not want to take credit for the ordinance he presented. However, he was instrumental in crafting it. I thank Alan and others who have come to know and respect that are on opposite sides, like Mr. Bob Wesley, who unfortunately can't be here due to injury, Mr. Mike Neese, Mr. Lou Fisher, Dr. Mary Feldblum, and others. What many of you may not know is I was asked to testify in front of our state PRC yesterday morning in Santa Fe by Excel Energy. Excel is in the process of investing over $800 million to put in the largest wind farm in our great state. This farm will produce over 1,200 megawatts and employ hundreds of construction workers and hire 20 to 30 full-time employees after completion. I was asked to advocate for that project because I believe in renewable energy and I believe in the importance of the oil and gas industry and I also believe in finding that right balance between economics and the environment. I think this wind farm will be and is a step in the right direction of where I see our country going in the next 20 to 30 years. As of today, we still rely on oil and gas for so many things from energy, transportation, infrastructure, and the hundreds of everyday products we use daily that contain petroleum ingredients. 
Many of you heard me discuss the economic impact the industry has on our state. While I may not be happy that our state is tied to oil and gas and federal dollars, those are the facts that we cannot ignore. We cannot ignore that this industry funds one of every three teachers in this state. I am the only county commissioner here with children in the public school system, and they're near and dear to my heart, all the kids. We cannot ignore that our seniors depend on health care funded by this industry. We cannot ignore that hundreds of thousands of people rely on social services funded by this industry. We cannot ignore that our infrastructure is funded by this industry and so many other areas of our state funding that are dependent on these precious dollars. Lastly, I cannot ignore or turn my back on the tens of thousands of direct and indirect jobs that this industry supports. I think it's important to note some important points. The chairman touched upon a few of them. This county had drilling operations for well over 60 years. During that time, I asked staff if there has ever been any ordinance before for Sandoval County. The answer is no. The issue by previous commissions did not, this issue by previous commissions did not fulfill their obligations for decades to put together an ordinance. They failed. This is the first time this commission has new political leadership and we are not shrieking our duty. We are moving forward. Do I believe the industry should be held accountable to the community in which they operate? Absolutely. And I'm sure that like with any industry, oil and gas has a few irresponsible operators, which is why I also support this ordinance, which includes the toughest penalties allowed by law from our representatives in Santa Fe, which has been controlled by one party for over 80 years. I also want to point out to Commissioner Eichwald, I also want to point out Commissioner Eichwald and the people in his district who, has lived, who have lived near this industry for decades and have benefited from mineral rights and other funds. I have received calls from people residing in District 5 for those in favor of the ordinance and they are upset about the pushback down here. They have said, and these are their words, not mine, quote, where were these people for the last five decades when this industry expanded up here? Now we see the old white people protesting when it could affect them. I guess it's good enough for us poor minorities, but not them. That resonated with me. Those are powerful words that I have taken to heart. I believe in equality, and right now I see a lot of inequality in our, in our county in regards to the location of industry operations. Furthermore, the public has had ample time to comment and express its concerns. We on this commission have heard from dozens of citizens and groups, and I have met personally with them numerous times. This commission was accused of not hearing a citizen presentation. That is false, and another lie by certain environmental groups. This commission put Mr. Bob Wesley on the agenda because the citizens asked for it. As an expert to present to us with New Mexico Tech, New Mexico Junior College, and OCD. The oil industry did not present, and since I have been on the commission, the industry has not had a formal presentation, only citizens. The PNZ also had dozens of citizens and groups come before that body to express their opinion and position. Lastly, in addition to the Planning and Zoning Commission's bipartisan, bipartisan recommendation in favor of this ordinance, my action this evening is primarily influenced by two factors. Number one, public testimony. Once again, thank you to each constituent and industry member who came forward or wrote to express your concerns and or support. Number two, the workshop the chairman talked about last spring. The Planning and Zoning Division provided a half-day workshop for commissioners with third-party <coughs> and constituents 
and other experts so the community could learn more about the industry and its impact on communities. Specifically, the Energy, Minerals, and Natural Resources Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Ken McKean, shared current regulations governing industry, including Oil Conservation Division, or OCD, within his agency, and some of them are in front of me. You may remember there's a four-page chart of regulations already in place that covers the areas of concern mentioned in public testimony numerous times throughout this whole process. Second, an instructor, an academic from the New Mexico Junior College, explained the production process through completion. His presentation included explaining the drilling of a well in relation to the water table and aquifer where he specifically explained the three layers of concrete and separating extraction from the community's water. On top of which there has not been, there has not been, and I talked to OCD, a reported case of groundwater contamination related to fracking. There have been spills, but there has not been groundwater contamination related to fracking. <coughs> Mr. Tooker also addressed seismic activity, a concern raised by many of you related to instances in Oklahoma. The geology in Oklahoma is not comparable to New Mexico according to the experts at New Mexico Tech. And there's never been seismic activity related to fracking in New Mexico according to the engineers, the experts that have been doing this for decades at New Mexico Tech. The economist Dr. Tom Clifford provided detailed information about the significant fiscal impact that the oil and gas industry has on our state and in San Paul County. One third, one third of the state's $6 billion budget comes directly from oil and gas, as does the entire permanent fund and more than $40 million to San Paul schools. In fact, both Rio Rancho and Cuba public schools leaders attended a workshop in support of a business friendly ordinance to support our children. In closing, there are currently 526 active wells in Sandoval County. In fact, there were wells that were recently drilled this year, according to Mr. Springfield. As some might be aware, when the chairman discussed it, or Mr. Jenkins talked about it, we have a 7.1%, 7 7.1% unemployment rate in our county, with greater than 20% of our people at or living at the poverty line or below. This industry will provide direct and indirect jobs, along with much needed GRT, when we see the average number, number of employees working rates at approximately 75 employees per rate with an average salary at $75,000 a year, more than twice the annual average wages for our citizens in New Mexico. I ask those in opposition to this industry, are you going to tell them and their families you want them to lose their jobs? and not be able to support their families and to move out of San Duval County? Are you going to tell them that we don't want them in our county? That's exactly what we are doing. I've also heard valid concerns about reclamation. The reclamation process occurs when a well is no longer producing and land is to be returned to its original appearance. Has there been issues here before? Yes. But this comes under the authority of state and federal regulations. This process is inspected and certified by OCD standards as well as the Governing Authority for Service Reclamation, which includes numerous state and federal regulations such as BLM, State Land Office, Tribal Governments, Surface Owners Protection Act. Our state is the fifth largest producer of oil and gas in our great country. Our country has some of the most restrictive ordinances in the world, and now you might be aware we are finally exporting natural gas to places like Poland. Think about that for a minute. We are on a path for Poland and other countries to no longer have to rely on Russia, who is a huge environmental polluter. And Russia holds these Eastern and Central European countries hostage, and they make billions of dollars for a brutal regime. Voting for this ordinance is a vote for our schools it's a vote for those poor people and elderly who rely on tax dollars. It is a vote for those tens of thousands of families that directly and indirectly rely on this industry as a worker, 
or as a small business owner. I have asked those against the industry numerous times, where will the state make up the 2 to 2.5 billion a year in our general fund? The answers I have received are quite troubling. They have ranged from raise taxes to the extreme of to blow up the well so they never come back, which I thought was a little extreme for an environmentalist. I will not turn my back on those needy people in our state and our children. And as I started this, we must continue to invest in renewable energy like what Excel Energy is doing in Roosevelt County. However, I ask you, if you want more restrictive industry, then please write your state reps, your U.S. Senators, your U.S. reps, to change the regulations in this industry in Santa Fe and D.C. They are the ones who have failed to show leadership under 80 years of political domination by one party in our state. With that, I yield my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Bond. Commissioner Ryan. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank uh, all the people that are here because of this issue. Uh, your passion is, is great, and I understand that on both sides. I also want to give a, 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 a thanks to the, the planning and zoning. They spend a lot of time and effort in, in crafting these ordinances and, and uh, as uh, Chairman said, they don't give a dime for doing that. So I, th I think a lot of people should thank these people for doing it. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a native uh, New Mexican. I, I was born and raised in San Juan County. And, you know, oil and gas has been in this uh, county for <coughs> not 50 years, but probably close to 70 or 80 years. My father worked on a rig up in Regina uh, when I was a young man, a, a very young man. I worked on a rig almost 50 years ago in the, the Ojoncino area. Not many of you can say that. Um, one of the things about oil and gas, uh, you know, these, these ordinances that we have, or this ordinance that we have before us, the Stoddard ordinance and the other ordinance, I'm not happy with either one of them, plain and simple. One of them is too restrictive, one of them is too liberal. Um, some, of the, some of the issues that I, I confront in, in uh, my district are roads and fire safety and that, those things. They say they're addressed in the Stoddard Ordinance, very vaguely. You know, it says the, the commissioners, the directors of, of, the, of, uh, of public works and the, and the fire department, uh, will be looking at these uh, wells and in these permits. Yet, when I talked to him recently, public works director didn't know where Ojoncino was. Our fire chief had never been up to counselors. How, how can I have confidence in, in some of the people that are working for our county to be able to take these initiatives on? Employment. You know, uh, I, I've seen uh, oil and gas industry in my area for many, many years. And it's a good, solid employer. They, they bring economy to, you know, to the northern part of the county. Uh, when oil is good, the, the, the employment is good. When it's bad, it still keeps some of the people employed. Um, our schools depend very, very much on the oil and gas industry. And it goes all the way down. It just doesn't affect Cuba or Hemis Springs. It affects Rio Rancho schools, Bernalillo schools. One of the things that, that uh, troubles me about, about this whole deal is that for, like I said, 50 years, 60 years, they've been drilling up in northern San Juan County. And this issue had never been a problem until Sandridge came down here about a year, two years ago. Before that, nobody cared. Not one, no, nobody from, from southern San Juan County made an issue to come up and see what was going on in the oil and gas industry up there. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to 
to uh, balance this act because I have people and I have a lot of the Native American communities that are uh, opposed to the oil and gas industry, but yet they have them in their, in their backyards and they're making some money off of it. And yet I have private owners that want the oil and gas industry. They don't want, they don't want anybody telling them, hey, you're, uh, you can't come in onto my property and tell me what to do. So it's, it's a big balancing act that, that we have to play. Um, <laughs> I hope that, uh, that the people that are here and the people of Santa Barbara County understands that, you know, we're going to try to get an ordinance. I do want an ordinance passed. Uh, if it's this one, possibly. If it's not, then let's move on to something that's bigger and better. But uh, I'm hoping that we put this to bed uh, soon and we can all go on with our lives because my phone can't take any more emails. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Eichel. Well, Commissioner Holden Rose. Well, the last two weeks have been a blur, um, trying to get up to speed. Um, in addition to the oil gas issue, um, I've been stampeded by horses in Placidas. We have a highway up there that is uh, sinking, and a bunch of folks want a tennis court. But my main focus has been on this, and several thoughts. I had the privilege of teaching the Constitution last spring and, and, and the previous fall. And it was fascinating to understand what the Founding Fathers went through. They went to Philadelphia. They had specific instructions to take the Articles of the Confederation and try and fix them. And when they got there, they looked at each other and said, there ain't no way this thing can be fixed. And so they looked back, they looked all the way back to the Greeks and the Romans and tried to understand government, governments before them. They looked at the philosophers who came later, Hobbes, Locke, Montesquieu, Descartes, and they looked at this thing called the social contract, this agreement between the government and the people, how should that work? And they put together this incredible document called the Constitution, which we have today. There is nothing like it in this world. Nothing like it. And what you see here this evening is the Constitution alive. Now, they came away from their history and studies with two thoughts, human nature, hasn't changed since the time of the Romans and the Greeks. And secondly, that compromise <coughs> was absolutely critical. And in order to shore good government, there had to be checks and balances, which is what you're seeing here tonight. And most importantly, there had to be an educated populace. So you all are to be commended for coming out tonight. Let me speak specifically, building upon that background, to oil and gas. One of the things that struck me as I went through is that there's no industry in this country that comes even remotely close to being regulated as is the oil and gas industry. <coughs> a, B, when you take a look at what areas the county can look at, they are minuscule. The federal government has about 80 to 85 percent of the regulations. State government comes in and it leaves us a very small number of things to take a look at. B or C or D. Early on I expressed my concern about water and I expressed my concern about monitoring. I'm convinced that over the last five or six years, the industry has changed through fracking for the better. And I'm convinced the techniques that are used now 
will protect our aquifer. The only areas that I'm uncomfortable the only area that I'm uncomfortable with is monitoring and regulation. That is left to the state of New Mexico. I don't think they do a good job. I don't think their staff is large enough to do what needs to be done. So that is a concern for me. All those thoughts together <coughs> wrap this thing up so I don't bore you to death. I think it's important to pass the ordinance for two reasons. Because it protects what we want to protect. Secondly, it sends a message that Sandoval County is in the business of doing business. And I see the oil and gas industry as a catalyst for the southern part of the county. Service industry will follow, other industries will follow. So I will tell you right now, I am voting for the ordinance. Sure. All right, thank you, Commissioner Holton Rhodes. Uh, Commissioner Hyde. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to say that I appreciate all the folks who come out, uh, not only for this meeting, but all the PNC meetings and the previous uh, commission meetings. And I also want to thank our PNC commissioners and uh, PNC staff. Um, I received an awful lot of Speak up, calls. Please. I received a lot of calls and emails. Sorry I wasn't able to get back to you on all those, but uh, I was busy. Uh, in those calls, I received a lot of um, what was clearly a misunderstanding of facts, in many cases some misstatement of facts. So one of the things that I did in these uh, section 1.4, which is state and federal preemptions, I got some help to go find the uh, URLs for where I could research each one of these. Now, I gotta be honest, I didn't get to all of them, but I got to the ones that I think were most important. And when you look at those in relation to some of the uh, penalties, Water Quality Act, is, for instance, uh, a compliance order shall state with reasonable specificity the nature of the violation independently assessed. So the penalty can either be $15,000 a day in noncompliance uh, in one circumstance or $10,000 a day for each violation in another circumstance. With regard to the, um, let's see, the Surface Owner Protection Act requires a, uh, a bond or letter of surety for uh, up to $10,000 per well. Uh, the uh, Solid Waste Act. Solid Waste Act, if a violation involves a quantity of solid waste that is less than 5,000 pounds, is guilty of a misdemeanor and the sentence uh, accordingly. And if more than 5,000 pounds, then uh, guilty of a fourth degree felony. Under the Clean Water Act, the amount of class one civil penalty could, penalty could be anywhere from 10,000 to $25,000. Uh, in the uh, class two civil penalty, could be anywhere up to $125,000. So I guess my point is, is, there's an awful lot of regulation out there already, and a lot of, um, let's say, uh, encouragement for the oil and gas industry to comply with uh, regulations or they're going to get uh, fined and taxed right out of business. With regard to this uh, particular uh, ordinance, I do have a few issues with it. I'd like to see as we move forward to post it that uh, there be a couple corrections to it in terms of the format. And it seems like we've got Article 1 and we go on to Section 1, 2, 3, 4, and then somehow further down we get to Section 3 has an A, but there's no B. So it ought to be all just Section 3.1. And then you get to Article 4, and it goes A, B, C, D. It ought to be uh, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4. Then you get to Article 5, the uh, permit application, it goes A, B, C, D, etc. It ought to be 5.1, 5.2. 5.3, 5.4, it's going to be consistent with something that we want to put forward to the public. The only other item that I have that I would uh, want us to embellish somewhat, and this was, I've got to admit, an idea that came out of the uh, citizens' uh, 
It was uh, some additional wording under L, which I think ought to be section 5.12, uh, that would add, um, let's see, concerning protection waters, and we'll provide estimates of how much water will be used, the type of water to be used, uh, and where the water is planned to be sourced. Uh, the operator will take reasonable measures necessary to avoid pollution of surface water, groundwater, and the use of non potable water wherever possible. That would be my suggestions to what we would correct it as we post it. <coughs> oh, one other comment. I have to support some of the other comments that we've said here with regard to the economic impact on our, our, on our state. Um, 30% of our state income comes from oil and gas. And we want to talk about renewables and I'm all for it. I'd like to see more solar and more wind. But we still have some issues to deal with those. Uh, it's kind of hard to store solar and wind. I've done a lot of research on that and how it is being stored. Some systems use compressed air. There's another uh, pilot project in, um, I think it's in Nevada, that uses molten salt, which needs to be 450 degrees before it can be liquid. And uh, But even those have some environmental impact issues. But also, the uh, ability to transport uh, through transmission lines these large uh, renewable facilities to where you need the power. And I guess the one uh, last comment I'd like to make with regard to the, um, the, com the comparison to natural gases, for instance, is the limitation of exporting of renewables. Now, you can export them to your neighboring states, but you sure can't export them to Poland or uh, Eastern Europe. And there's a lot of potential for, um, for us here in the, in the United States to be able to do that. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Heil, thank you for your comments. So, Mr. Um, Chairman. Yes, sir. I mean, just Chairman. from a procedural point, could we have those changes uh, <coughs> that Commissioner Heil just outlined? We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Made into a motion, please, uh, to amend the ordinance as such. Yeah, we're going to have to do that if we're going to amend it. Yes, sir. And pass it. So, yes, sir. I, I will challenge uh, Direct uh, Commissioner Heil to. Reiterate uh, those. He, he just hold on. Got it written down here. So we got under uh, when we get to section 3.1, it should be just 3.1. There's an A, but there's no B. Right. Okay. When we get to uh, Article 4, instead of using letters, we should be consistent in using 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. For A, B, C, and D. Instead of A, B, C, and then in Article 5. Uh, it ought to be, uh, instead of A, it should be 5.1, and then you can continue those numbers up to L, which would then be 5.12. Um, and then the uh, text edit that I suggested with regard to uh, section 5.12 would be, um, and I can hand you this piece of paper if you want. But it would say uh, the applicant shall certify that it will comply with the requirements of OCD and NMED concerning the protection of waters. Will provide estimates of how much water will be used, the type of water to be used, fresh, effluent, or produced, and where the water is planned to be sourced. Operator will take all reasonable measures necessary to avoid pollution of surface water and groundwater and use of the water whenever water and water possible. And you can have this document. We, 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 we got it on the record now. Uh, so I make that motion. All right. Okay. So then going forward, though, Director Springfield, I would like for you to put on the public record what was staff's recommendation in regards to this ordinance brought forth by PNC. Our recommendation was for approval for publishing general signing time. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Block. thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Springfield, I just have a, a couple questions I'd like you to, to answer that have been brought to me from some uh, some residents. Uh, you know, I think it's important to know to a certain extent uh, the performance reputation, definitely the performance reputation, but there's also proprietary information that comes to the financial condition of any new welling, of any new drilling company which comes into our county. I think you would agree with that, correct, sir? Yes, sir. 
what provisions are now in place in this regard, and how, if any, if in any way will it change with this ordinance? There are no provisions for it, and it would not change with this ordinance. And I would note for the record that we do not require that of any other business, industry, anything in this county. So you you are not, I want to make sure I understand you. This is an important part when it comes to the financials. You are not required to review the financials of any business that comes across uh, your office for a permit. Is that correct? Correct. Why is that? That's not our job. We do land use. We wouldn't know anything about the finances of a company if we had to. Okay. I'd like to just ask you about the reclamation process real quick. Now, we've talked about the number of wells here, about 527. Is that a good number that you would agree with, sir? We go anywhere between 480 and 530. It just depends what uh, database you're looking at. We come in about 480 uh, through OCDs last week. 480, would that be considered operational? Yes. Would operational be considered uh, still uh, drilling, or could they still be operational but not drilling right now? In other words, the industry could come back. In other words, right, it could be shut down, but the industry could come back and, and uh, commence operations again. Correct. So when the operations process is over, tell me what the rec reclamation process is to get that land back to its natural state. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Watts, my understanding the uh, OCD regulations are specific to plugging and abandonment. There is a process of plugging the well, and once the well is plugged by the regulations, it cannot be used again. Is it inspected after it is plugged? That I don't know, sir. So I, I, I was told it was inspected by the state, not by the county. That's true. Yes. That is true. It is true. Okay, so it is inspected when it's plugged by the state. Correct. By the state. Yes. Okay. Then the industry will remove all the equipment off that parcel of land when they're complete after the plugging. Is that correct? Yes. And then they try to get the vegetation back. Yes. Take some time, obviously. Yes. Very well. Tell me, there's been some talk concerning water, groundwater contamination. Uh, has there been any groundwater contamination here in Sandoval County in the 60 plus years of fracking and drilling and gas operations that you know of? Not that we can, and we've researched that, and we've talked to New Mexico Tech about that, we've talked to OCD about that. Nobody has any information that that has ever occurred. Uh, we cannot get a citation, and we've been asking for the citation from the public whoever's making these accusations and we still cannot get a citation on where to go look that information up to find if that's the case. We also talked about the last penalties to the oil and gas industry. I'm sure you've heard, correct? Correct. We talked about the $300 a day uh, penalty fee, correct? Correct. Is that, is that regulated by the county or is that regulated by the state? Regulated by the state the requirement of the county. That's the maximum we can charge. And we cannot charge that. We can take the violation to court, and a judge can issue that. We've also heard uh, some concerns um, regarding, and I talked about it in my remarks, seismic activity. Um, I, I just want to verify with you, I was told by New Mexico Tech and OCD of no seismic activity in San Juan County related to the operations here. Is that, are they telling me uh, that fact? Correct, it's the same thing they told us. I'd also just, real quick, like the last question I want to talk to you about, and I don't know if Chief Maxson <laughs> is in the room or not. Or, He's listening upstairs. Okay, well, you're the deputy, right? Depends on the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a uh, emergency response question if you could come forward, sir, and, and answer that. If, if you're qualified uh, to do that. I will do my best, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hill. I might have something for you after. Can you state your name for the record? 
Uh, Eric Masterson, Deputy Chief of Santa Walk County Fire Department. How long have you been the Deputy Chief for? Can you speak into the mic more, please? Eric Masterson, Deputy Chief of the Santa Walk County Fire Department. Can everyone still hear him or not? No. no. Eric Masterson, Deputy Chief of the Santa Walk County Fire Department. How long have you been a firefighter for here in Santa Walk County? Since 2006, so going on 12 years. What type of training do you guys do in relation to um, uh, the wells around San Juan County? Training about oil and gas in general comes in our firefighter two level training. So it's the advanced level of training, which all of our career firefighters and we are working on all of our volunteer firefighters getting up to that level as well. But we talk about everything from the transportation of oil and gas and how to deal with those emergencies to how to deal with tank fires, well fires, etc. So you're telling me in the various contingencies related to transportation or fires on site, your firefighters are trained uh, to respond to those contingencies? We have training in how to deal with those contingencies, yes. In, in association with a lot of times we might need to utilize agency uh, partners, and we have those mutual But that's with anything, is Absolutely, it not? Absolutely, yes, sir. It's mutual aid agreements are very good in this county. I mean, other, other counties, or Bruno Leo, for instance, or Rio Rancho has actually called you guys to aid them in contingency operations, correct? Yes, yes, sir, that is correct. Do you know if, uh, I understand San Juan County firefighters are, are trained in these contingency operations. Do you know if there's been a partnership with Rio Rancho, Corrales, Bruno Leo, Cintas, uh, Hemes, any of the other fire departments around the county where they're trained um, in relation to um, uh, transportation of fuel or contingency <coughs> operations on site? If they have the firefighter two training levels, which I know they have in Corrales, in Bernalillo, in Rio Rancho, then yes, they would be, have that same level of training that we do. So that provides you a hell of a lot more manpower than what you have currently at San Juan County, correct? Absolutely, yes, sir. <coughs> I think that gentleman answered my question. So oh, okay. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Block. Commissioner Eichel well, came up with a question he has. Um, the citations that are given to, to any violators uh, uh, on the oil and gas industry, you, you, you mentioned uh, <coughs> going to a judge. It doesn't specify that in, in the ordinance so anywhere about where it goes to. What, what judge or, or what court would it go to? So the PMZ stuff is regulated by, um, by the state statutes on what counties can and cannot do. And there are two ways that any planning and zoning issue, land use issue, can go before a judge. is either through a civil action or through a criminal action. And the criminal um, action can be filed in either magistrate court or district court. So it's up to the county attorney at that point. So it's file. discretionary then to the, to the judge whether they want to find them $300 or not? Correct. And it would be the same thing with a, um, a yard that has a lot of trash in it. Uh, I, I, have, I have a couple of questions for, for the for Deputy uh, Fire Chief. Um, in reference to, to some of the questions that the Commissioner Block was asking, um, how, much, how much material do you have in, uh, in storage to be able to go after an oil and gas buyer? It depends on the size of the fire, a transportation fire versus a, a rig on fire versus a storage tank on fire. Can you speak more to the mic, please? Sorry. Um, it depends on the size of the fire or what is involved in the fire, whether it's a, a transportation rig, whether it's the oil drilling rig itself, or whether it's uh, a storage tank, for example. All of them are going to require a different approach. All of them are going to require different uh, levels of manpower and equipment. Unfortunately, in certain areas of the county, the, the best thing that you can use in these types of fires, for example, is going to be foam. And we do have a good amount of foam throughout our county, and our mutual aid partners all carry a good amount of foam. We use it on standard fires, which is the same as we would use it on uh, oil rig type fires. It's a different type of foam, but it's the same concept. Uh, getting access to those areas can be challenging at times, depending on the, the size of the fire, depending on 
if it's a storage tank, for example, a lot of times throughout the country, if you ever look at a storage tank of oil on fire in these mass production areas, they call in resources from all over the country just because it takes a lot of manpower and a lot of equipment to put some of these fires out. So it really depends on the size and the volume that is being uh, consumed by fire. But again, transportation type trucks, uh, rigs that catch fire, things of that nature, we've actually experienced um, very minor situations uh, that have been able to put out by our resources uh, in Santa Ball County and with our partnering agencies. So uh, we, we are able to handle the stuff that we, we feel like we would see. That being said, we do, would uh, obviously need to probably up the amount of equipment uh, and, and storage of foam that we have just to be on the safe side. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Eichel, thank you. Um, if there aren't any more questions or comments, um, it's time now for this board to consider the ordinance that was put forth by the Planning and Zoning Commission. And um, I think we're going to need a new motion because we have amended. Yes, sir, Director Spring. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm just being careful here. I heard the motion, but I didn't hear a second yeah. and vote on that motion to amend. No, I understand. That's why I'm calling for it. So I'm calling for a motion as amended. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? A second. Okay, so we have a motion uh, to approve the oil and gas ordinance that was brought forth by the Planning and Zoning Commission as amended tonight. We're basically talking about numbering and lettering in the, in the document with a little, a little bit of verbiage that was offered by the Commissioner. I have the other comments there. So a motion to post. Yeah, that's it's not to approve. It's just a motion to publish and post uh, the document. In fact, I can refer to uh, Director Springfield for all the technical language that's involved in this process. Would you like to volunteer that up, sir? Mr. Chairman, it's a request for a motion to approve publication and title of general summary of the planning and zoning oil and gas ordinance draft September 2017 final version. There we are. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, Madam Clerk. Vice Chair Hyam. Yes. Commissioner Block. Aye. Commissioner Holden Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Eichel. No. Chair Chairman. Chair Bochess. Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, this board is not done tonight. We have a closed session that we're going to go into now. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Appreciate you. Uh, a motion to go into closed session to discuss limited personnel matters, discuss the county attorney position in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, Section 10-15-1H2. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Got a motion to second that part. Yes. Aye. Thank <laughs> you.